So tonight, guys, where I want to take y'all guys to, I believe it's in preparation for what's going to happen Sunday morning. Uh, I mean, at least what we're celebrating that day for. We're celebrating that day because Jesus was born. Amen. Come on, somebody. Now, we understand he wasn't born on that exact day, right, December 25th. We understand that that's a, a worldly date. But regardless, we're still going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. We're going to declare that he is just good and that thank God that he was born and that we today can live our lives out uh, in the love of Jesus through the blood of Jesus, through the grace of Jesus, come on, in faith, praise God, and, 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 and really, really, man, uh, have a destiny, destiny, have a destiny that we're going to get to, and that destiny is where? Heaven, where we're going to spend eternity with Jesus, amen, come on, somebody, amen, praise God. So tonight, what I got to give you guys, here's the title of the message, it's entitled, Love that changed everything. And I was going to add about me. <laughs> Love that changed everything about me. Because that's exactly what happened 20 years ago. Uh, September 22nd, 2002. When I gave my life to Jesus. Then at an altar just like this. At a church just like this. Afterwards the pastor made an altar call. Uh, he said somebody in this room. You're tired of doing the drugs. You're tired of living your life the way you. You're living, you, you, you're asking for change, you just don't want to do it God's way. There's somebody, I mean, he's specifically, like, that was me, like, exactly. And I was like, and I just felt my hand go up like this by itself, guys, by itself, like this. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at my hand like, what are you doing? He called me, he goes, you young man right there, come on up here. And he said, man, you, you, you're, 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 you know, this, this, and that led me to Jesus. And right there immediately, I felt the surge going from my feet all the way up to my head, and I felt something just go boom. I felt peace. I knew something had changed. Jesus changed everything about me at that point right there to the point where I went home and flushed down drugs and went and emptied out the cans of alcohol, eventually went on to break all my music. I had a large, a very large collection of music uh, and broke every single one of them from cassettes. If I would have had eight tracks, I would have busted those eight tracks too, but I, I had cassettes, like a large amount of cassettes. Some of y'all don't even know what, what is a cassette. Guess that's what, it was a cassette and then CDs and all this and this and that. And haven't looked back for 20 years. Come on, somebody. And I'm about to celebrate 21 next year in September. And I'm going to celebrate 22 after that. I'm going to celebrate 23 after that. Eventually, I'm going to get to the point where Jesus is like, all right, you can stop counting now because you're right here in my presence. I'm like, praise the Lord. Thank you. Finally made it. Love that changed everything. Now. Uh, <clears throat> I, 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 I believe that tonight's message is going to take us to a, uh, to a place, guys, where we, we will fully understand why we celebrate Christmas. And I know that, I think it was last year, Brother Hector, when I, I taught a message, and uh, it was on Christmas, and I said, uh, or it was on somewhere that, Christmas, that Sunday, it was around it. Yeah, 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 it's not about the presents, it's about his presence, right? It's, no, no es de los presentes, pero la presencia. Praise the Lord. But anyhow, um, and, and that's, you know, and that's really the, the truth of it is, but, but I'm going to take a little bit deeper tonight. I'm going to actually get to the root of the reason why we're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And it deals with love. And I have a question that's attached to this, uh, to this message tonight. And the, mes and, and the question is this. How easy... Is it to love? That's the question. How easy is it to love? Before Jesus came into play, but he's always been here. But before he was manifested in the flesh through a virgin named Mary, the entire human race for all that time up until Jesus was born, the entire human race, all of humanity, if you was to put all the love that all humanity put together had, it still wasn't enough. Wow. Just think about that. I, I made a statement earlier, and I said, you know, you really can't truly love if you don't have Jesus. You really can't. 
There's, there's a blockage there. As much as you would like to, and there's, this, there's just this something there that you can't fully be active in love apart from Jesus. You just can't. Um, all the highest form of love that you'll have is emotional love. But when Jesus comes into play, you start to have unconditional love. Ooh, come on, somebody. I always had a rule. If, if, I ever told you, if I ever tell you I love you, that's it. I'm never going to take that back. Why? Because I'm operating under the unconditional love of Jesus. I give my love to him. That's what he says in his, in his commandments. He says, love thy Lord thy God with all your heart. Have you ever thought about when somebody makes a statement, you know what, my kids, they're my heart. You ever heard that? My wife, she is my heart. Okay, well, that's fine, and that's okay, humanly speaking. But our heart should belong to him. Come on, somebody. I know I'm taking this a little extreme, but we'll get there. All your heart belongs to him. All your soul. Love him with all your soul. Love him with all your strength. Come on, love him with all your mind. So your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, it should all belong to who? Come on, somebody say Jesus in this house. Come on, praise God. It should all belong to Jesus. It's not, and, and so, well, what's left, Pastor? I mean, how am I going to love my kids? With his love. See, when you, ex- it's, it's an exchange. When you, when you, you take your love, uh, with all your heart, your love with all your soul, strength, mind. And, and, you, and you direct it to who it's supposed to go to. Come on, somebody. Praise God. When you, when you direct it to who it's supposed to go to, it all goes to him. And then in turn, he drops down the ability for you to be able to love others. Come on, praise God. Because if you notice in the commandments, the first, it's, there's an order to it. It says this. Love the Lord thy God, right? First, so that means you got to give him all that. Second is love thy neighbor, Right? As thyself. So there's three people that should be loved in that commandment. But there's only two that are supposed to be loved with God's love. There's only one that's supposed to be loved with your love. Oh, Jesus. Here we go. God is the only one that's supposed to be loved with our love. Everybody else, the neighbor and yourself, should be loved by God's love. Come on, somebody. Come on, someone say God's love. love. Someone say unconditional love. Now watch this. Um, God through his word tells us exactly why Jesus was sent. Go with me to John 3.16. A well-known scripture. Everybody knows John 3.16. People got it tatted on their arms, on their back, on their face nowadays. John 3.16, I can hear now. Oh, praise the Lord. All right, so uh, it says here, for God... So loved the world. Okay, here we go. So God, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Let's go back to the question. How easy is it to love? How easy is it to love? Well, God thought nobody can measure up to the love that they should be having. So I'm going to have to send somebody so that love can be activated. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. That word perish means die. You, You shall not die, but you'll have eternal life. Whoa, wait a minute, what? So God's love is packaged in Jesus. He had to send somebody so that we, you and I now, could be able to love correctly, fully. And this is the reason why Jesus was sent Sunday morning. He was sent because he loved us. The Bible says that there has never been a man who has ever demonstrated love for you like Jesus who laid down his life for us. 
And you just think about the love that we have for people sometimes. Because, you know, our, our love can be a little teeter-tottering, right? You ever have that? You, have you ever loved somebody so much that you hated them at one point? Nobody in here? We're all just, we're glorified, praise the Lord. We all got, nobody? Okay, so like, y'all know what I'm saying. Like, nobody wants to say yes because I know, Pastor. You, ain't, you know, okay, I, I, I get it. I get it. But I believe that we've all been there. We've all, we've all, we've all showed that. We've all demonstrated that at one point. But now that Jesus is in the picture, can I say this? Like, you don't have an excuse not to love. And the only reason why you may have an excuse why you don't love people is because you haven't given all your love to him in exchange for his love through you for others. Did you know that when you give your love, all, when you give all your love to God, it's in his hands now. That means that nobody, what's this? Nobody can hurt you. Why? Why can't nobody hurt you? Because your love is in him. You've done giving all your love to him. You've done giving your heart to him. You've done giving your soul to him. You've done giving your strength to him. You've done giving your mind to him. It's in God's hands. And how many of you know that God will not hurt you? That means that now the love that you're giving to people is God's love. And really the love that you're going to hurt, if you're going to call me names or if you're going to hurt me or if you're going to talk about me or if you're going to try to take, take advantage of me or you're going to try to manipulate me, you're really not doing it with my love because my love is in his hands. You're actually doing that to God's love. And this is why people need to ask for forgiveness. Come on. Did you know that the greatest tool a marriage has is forgiveness? That's the greatest tool a marriage has. In a marriage, uh, there's a lot of tools that you should be carrying in your marriage. When y'all guys got married, it wasn't just a marriage license that you took home with you. No, you should have got some tools, too. You should, we should be carrying a tool belt. <laughs> Come on. You got forgiveness. You got patience. You got love. You got joy. You got joy. No, but ahorita ain't got no joy. Well, it's in your on your tool belt this is what you should have in your marriage amen okay so for god so loved the world that he gave his only one begotten son i like how the message puts this what's this in the message translation john 3 16 through 17 it says this is how much god loved the world now that word the world is not the same as he who is friends to the world is an enemy stands as an enemy of god that's not the same world that one talks about the world system it's talking about the same world that Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. That's another kind. This one right here is actually the people. Come on. So this is how much God loved the people of this world. Why, can I ask a question? Watch this, man. This is, this is a powerful question. And if somebody can answer this for me, that would be amazing. But don't answer it tonight. But watch this question right here. Sister Rosalina, watch this question. Do you serve the world for God? Or do you serve God for the world? Think about that. Just something to think about, guys, tonight. Just think about that for a little bit. It probably makes sense about 3 o'clock in the morning tonight where you're asleep. And, hey, uh, oh. Peppa Pig came out of it. Out of, out of, <laughs> anyways, all right. So, <laughs> there, all right, uh, so that's a good question. Anyways, that's, that's beside the point. It says, this is how much God loved the world. He gave his son, his one and only son, and this is why. So that no one will need to be destroyed. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody. somebody. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus, for that. By believing in him, anyone can have a whole and lasting life. Watch this next line. And God didn't go to all the trouble of sending his son merely to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. Come on. Ooh. He came to help to put the world right again. Listen to me, guys. This is how important that when we follow that commandment to give all your love to him is because now with his love through you, and when you give it to people, your spouse, your children, your husband, 
the, the, your coworkers, your boss, your church members, everybody. Watch this. Now you start making things right again. Are y'all with me tonight? There are some relationships, guys, that have been altered in our lives that we know in here, we all know, they got to get right again. I mean, listen, they're, they're, earlier today I was talking to somebody and they were telling me how it's, it's a stepdad who is uh, in this family and the kids don't seem to respect them. How many of you ever heard that? They don't respect him whatsoever. And this guy is such a great man. He's a good guy. He, he treats those kids like they're his own. But yet they don't reciprocate back the love. And it all goes back to that, you know, their real father kind of puts stuff in their head about certain things. And he says, man, sometimes, and this is what he said, he says, it can be difficult to love them. He says, but I still do. And this is what I told him. I said, bro, listen, you're doing the right thing. I said, but you got you, you to gotta direct your love to God so that God can drop his love in you so now that you can take care of business. Because watch this, guys. Love is not... Um, what's the word here? I was going to say affection, but it is affection. Uh, it's not, it's not merely an emotion. Okay. Because, because here, the, the love that comes from God is spirit. Because God is spirit. And we'll find out here in a minute what, 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 what I'm going to with, with this. But are y'all guys kind of getting this? All right, watch what Romans 5, 8 says in the New Living Translation. Watch this. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Think about that. I remember one time somebody said this to me. They were like, you know, you know what I don't like about Christians? They like to pick and choose who's, who's going to get saved. I said, what? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they don't talk, they'll talk to certain, some people about Jesus, but then they won't talk to other people about Jesus because they don't like them. They don't get along with them. And, 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 and he said, man, and you know what? It's that person that they don't like, that they can't stand, that they just don't want to have a conversation with. Those are the ones that need that love that comes from Jesus so that that love can be corrected on the inside. Come on, somebody. Praise God. So that now maybe in turns that person will begin to start reciprocating that love back. Did you know that that's going to be the cure for all this whole thing? For God so loved the world. Think about the world out there. It's in darkness. It's chaotic. Ain't no love. There's a whole bunch of hating going on, right? Okay. So we got to understand that the reason why Jesus came is so that all that could get right. And so, so that we could be loved. So not only God showed his great love. So watch this, guys. Here, let, let's take the principle out of that right there. In order for your children to not get involved in things that they don't need to get involved with, we have to show love to our kids. We have to show love to our spouse. We have to show love to the world. I mean, that's why Jesus came. That's why you and I accepted Jesus. So that that love can now be activated in our lives. And we can walk this love out, guys, because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, guys, divorce would drop if we could understand this. Abuse would drop if we could understand this. I even believe that mental health could drop if we could understand this. Cheating would drop if we could understand this. But 
Because this love was poured into us because there was a sacrifice. There was a crucifixion that happened. And sometimes, you know, I, I kind of look at the picture of the three crosses. How many of y'all like that picture of the three crosses? And I think to myself, there shouldn't be a picture of three crosses. There's no need for it. There should only be one. Because it's not about the two thieves on the side. But I get it. It's showing grace. One for the, the one on this side who says, man, forget him, man. He ain't going to And the one on this side that said, man, remember me in paradise. I, I get that. But the three crosses should not be a representation of who we are. Some of y'all are like, oops, I already tapped the three crosses on my body. Okay, well, uh, get an eraser and erase the other two. <laughs> Which I know, that's a worldwide thing, man. Everybody, the three crosses, there's songs about it. I get it. But I'm like, it's not. Well, let me take a little step further, guys. Can I just tell you this? Jesus off that cross. It was on that cross that he was crucified. But, man, it, it, it went further. And, yes, Paul preached Christ and Christ crucified. But they also taught on the resurrection. And, and it was the resurrection that people had a problem with. Not so much the crucifixion, because it was a happy Friday. That was a happy day for the world. The crucified Jesus on that cross. But the resurrection, that's what they didn't like. And they were telling Paul and him to stop preaching Jesus, preaching Jesus that he was resurrected from the dead. That's what they had a big problem with. And so here, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm telling you guys tonight. Listen, the love that Jesus has for us is the reason why we celebrate Christmas. All right, let's go to this last, last scripture here. Uh, 1 John 4, 7 through 10, NIV. Watch this. Dear friends, let us love one another. Let's say amen. All right, this is your family members. This is your church family. This is your pastor, right? This is your coworkers. This is your bosses. This is... Your father who left you. This is your mother who left you. This is all the people that abused you in your life. He said, let us love one another. Watch this. For love comes from God. Did you guys get that? Where does love come from? Does it come from your heart? No, it comes from God. Now, the love that we have is one thing, right? That's one type of love. This is the love that when I was telling you earlier that all the world, all of humanity's love compiled together could not measure up to this love right here. This love right here is a whole lot better. This love right here is a whole lot more powerful. This love right here never fails. Come on, somebody. Praise God. This love right here covers a multitude of sins. This love right here doesn't condemn this love right here doesn't look down people's noses. This love right here is different. This love changed everything. Come on, somebody. This love right here changed everything. Jesus changed it up on the game. They're like, hey, well, you know, uh, Jesus, would like, the Bible tells us that, you know, we should, um, you know, love, that are, love those that are with us and, and hate our enemies. He says, yeah, I know it was said like that. He said, but it is now changed now love your enemies Woo, praise god see see watch this guys can i tell you this it's almost impossible to love your enemies when you don't have god's love you can't do it something on the inside of you that bitterness that hatred that rancor that just ugh, ugliness on the inside of you don't want to let you do that no more. i can't stand them cool then give all that, all that that you got right there, give it to God. Boom, let him give you his love. And now go out there and just ask for forgiveness and let's get the right thing done. Come on, amen. Praise God. So, dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God. There it is. Notice that. If you've been born of God, that means you've got Jesus. Everyone who loves. How many of y'all love in this house? Come on, somebody. Y'all know how to love? Come on, somebody. Y'all got Jesus? How many of y'all got Jesus in this house? Come on, come on, all right. Or well, everyone who loves has been born of God, watch this, and knows God. Whoever does not love, oh gosh, does not know God because God is love. God is love. So really, can, 
maybe we could say it like this. I remember I used to say this. I, I did it for, for a little bit, but I was like, what if instead of me telling my wife, honey, I love you, what if I said, I got you? <laughs> It'd be the same thing, right? Because God is love. Come on, somebody. Listen, our homes need love in it. If we're going to want our children to be raised up in a different way than everybody else's. Our kids cannot be the same like the world's kids. Not if we have love in our home. And I mean God when I say love. God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Next line. And this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son. Where did where, where, where we read that before? John 3.16. Here, John is saying it again. It's the same guy who wrote that. He said he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. It's the same thing he said earlier, so that those who believe on him will not perish or die, but have eternal life. Okay, guys, watch. What if, I know we shouldn't be going by what is, but what if our eternity is going to be dependent on the love that we give that came from God? That that's what he's going to live for. Because watch this. He says, when he comes to this earth, it says, will he find faith? Watch this. Hmm. That's good. But the only way faith is activated is through love. Ooh, <laughs> praise God. What if? Yeah, he's going to come back to find faith. But the reality is faith was only activated by love. Oh, gosh. That's just something to think about tonight, guys. Think about that. Next time you want to hate somebody. Because the Bible says if you say you love God and you hate your brother and sister, you know what it says? I don't know if y'all guys read, read your Bible. But it says that. I'm not looking at anybody in here. I'm not, I'm not looking at myself either. It says here that the Bible says that he who says he loves God yet hates his brother, it says that he's a liar. And who's the liar? Does anybody know who the liar is according to the word of God? The devil? Okay, all right, here we go. So just think about that, guys. Are we, could it be that we're spending a lot of our time in the devil's domain when we should be spending it in God's? Through the action of love. Well, faith, either one, love. 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 So let's think about it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Think about that. That's Hebrews 11.6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. All right, so how does but how is faith activated? Through love. That's Galatians. So how important is it what we're going to celebrate Sunday morning? It is that important because love showed up on the scene. Love came here. Love that changed everything. The way we function, the way we operate, the way we treat people, the way we don't treat people, the way, you know, all this stuff. It's all based on love. So I'm going to give you this challenge, guys. I'm going to give you this challenge. I know we're about to wrap the year up and we're going to start a new year. But I'm going to ask you this. Could one of your, you know, we, everybody's got this New Year's uh, resolution stuff, whatever. You know, nobody keeps it. It ends in March, I think, or February for most of us. <laughs> Anyways, I would say this, guys. I challenge you, not to, not to make it a New Year's resolution, but what, what about this? Why don't you make it a year-long practice? Watch this. Because love is intentional. Love is intentional. When you feel like not loving somebody, love them anyways. When you feel like not serving somebody, serve them anyways. Come on. <laughs> when you feel like, man, they don't deserve, no, no, no. Do it. I ain't going to ask him for forgiveness. Forgive. 
Look past the offense. Look past the offense. And love. Love. Intentionally, on purpose, on behalf of God. Because ultimately, we are sharing God's love so that faith can be activated. And when he comes back, he'll find faith right here. Because love was very much well intentionally put into play. Amen. Come on. EJ. Amen. Praise God. So whoever does not love, love, love this, okay, God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son to live, live through him. Last line is this. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. And sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Oh, gosh. Love took away your sins. Another, another could it be for you guys tonight. And we'll be, we'll, we'll be done here. And I'm going to make one last statement and we'll be done. Could it be that change hasn't occurred because love hasn't been present? Because love changes everything. Well, it's not that easy, Pastor. I mean, you don't even understand. This guy right here, I dang, this guy, man, oh, it's tough to love him. Yeah, I know. I'm sure it is. I mean, all of us in this room probably got somebody that we know that's, that's, a, that's a tough person to love. Boy, they're just too. Well, let me tell you this. The reason why they're so tough to love is because they need it. <laughs> come on now. Come on, somebody. They need that love. That's why they're so tough. Because let me tell you this, for the most part, the reason why that person's so tough, because they haven't been loved. They've never received love. They've probably even been told, I love you. Everybody's always rejected them. Everybody's always pushed them to the side. They've used them. They've abused them. They've neglected them. They left them on the doorstep as a baby. Nobody's ever really showed any sort of love in their life. So guess what? They are now locked down. And they don't even want to go into that area. They don't. But it's going to take somebody like you that's got the love of God shed abroad in your hearts through the Holy Spirit, who now is a walking billboard for God's love, praise God. And when you give that love, God's love, to them, things begin to shift and things begin to change. Because this is the only love right here that can change everything. This is the only love that can change everything. Change everything. Change it all. Watch this, guys. I'm going to leave you with this. The greatest way to give love, watch this, listen to me closely. The greatest way to give love, I'm talking about God's love. The greatest way to give love, watch this, is to be loved. Praise God. Mm -mm -mm. The greatest way to be loved, is to have love. That's Jesus. And the greatest way to have love is to receive Jesus. Come on, somebody. Did y'all get that tonight? Amen. Praise God. And guess what? Sunday morning, that's what it's going to be all about. So understand this. The reason Jesus came to be born is so that I could be loved. And when I'm loved... Now I can give love. No, no, let's do it, let's do it like this. Let's, let's, let's do it through the order of this, of this statement here. The reason why Jesus was born is so that I could have love. Mm, Jesus. And when I have love, now I can give love. And when I give love, it's because I, I am love. Is that the right way to do it? The greatest way to give love is to be loved. The greatest way to be loved is to have love. The greatest way to have love is to receive Jesus. So Sunday morning, guys, that's what it's all about. It's simple. It's just, it's about love. So let's think about this. The greatest gift that you and I receive is Jesus, love. So the greatest gift that you can give to somebody is Jesus, love. Jesus. Y'all guys get that? And watch this. 
Love can heal your body. Love can heal your body. Love can restore your family. And I'm talking about God's love, not our love, his love. The full, complete, perfect love of God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can, you, can we give God a praise? Praise. Uh, that's it. So remember that Sunday morning when we're in here having church or you guys are opening gifts with all your family members. Just remember that, guys. At this time, I want to give you guys the opportunity to sow, to give into the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Just want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys. You guys have been hearing me uh, teach out of uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 10. Uh, and uh, I believe that you guys have responded well to that scripture. And, you know, that's really the key to it is just responding to the word. You know, when you respond to the word, God blesses, man. God blesses. And I know that financially a lot of people right now, they may or may not be going through some things financially, struggling, things like that. But God, God knows that. God said, man, I already know that you guys are going to be struggling financially in the future, but I've already made a way for you. How's that? Through tithes and offerings. Praise God. There's a portion of your money that comes into your hand that's called seed that God ministers to us as sowers. He ministers seed to us as sowers. And God says that he will not only give you food to eat and um, will uh, also uh, multiply the seed sown, but he would also increase the fruits of your righteousness through that. So that, that's just a powerful thing to do, guys, according to 2 Corinthians 9.10. Uh, again, just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for doing your part. It is because of all of our generosity and all of our giving that this ministry is able to do what it does. It takes care of the utilities and things and take care of the operations of the church, but it also takes care of other things. It takes care of when people need gas in their car, when people need, they, they, they fall on hard times and they can't pay their electricity bill. And if we're able to do that and we have it available, listen, all of us together have made that possible. Praise God. And not only that, but we also sow seed every month to Israel. Praise God to the Holy Land. Uh, we have a, a, a pastor in a church there in uh, Israel uh, that uh, we send a partnership seed to them every month. So just know that a portion of your giving, a portion of it goes towards the Holy Land of Israel. Praise God. So we take care of that. That's where God's people is at. Of course, we're God's people too. But those are the, 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 the people over there. That's what Jesus is coming back to over there. So just know that uh, this is good soil. All right. You guys can can know that when you sow your seed into this soil, it will produce what God said it will produce. It will produce 60, 30, 60, even 100 fold back into your life. Amen. Praise God. So if you are f financially struggling, just know that God has a plan for you. And especially if you're God's people, if you're a child of God, then you've got a system that is guaranteed to work for you. And you will get over even on your finances. Praise God. And you'll see the blessing of God on your money. Praise the Lord. And, you, you know, you, you get out of that system where you have more month than money. How many of you have ever been there? Well, when you, when you start to operate in the system of God, you'll start seeing you have more money than month. Shh, come on, praise God. That's how it works. So, anyways, let's go ahead and lift up our, our seat to the Lord tonight. If you have cash and checks, there are envelopes right there in front of your seat. Uh, if you give by way of text to give, the information is up here on the board. Praise God. At this time, uh, Father, we just thank you for blessing each and every person. Uh, their seed be multiplied tonight, Father. We ask that you would just enrich them in abundance, Father, that they'll have an amazing holiday season, not only on Christmas, but even a great New Year, Father. Thank you for blessing them in abundance. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen and amen. Let's